and then gone and the weird cat creature lived happily ever after the end. Wow. It's crazy how much can change in a single week, huh? I mean, I normally cover about 30 chapters of the story for these videos and then give you my take on it. The only problem is that with these latest 30 chapters, I was bored out of my mind by them. Now that okay, so do it. Yeah. You do what you do. You, if it's got to be a 10-minute video, that's going to be a 10-minute video. You talk about what you can talk about, you speculate later, but you, you come out and say, yo, this was boring. But but just going doubling up, that's, I don't, I don't, I don't dig that. I was bored out of my mind by them. Now, that's not to say it was super bad or anything, just that I wasn't exactly impressed or even had that much fun reading it. The material is very much setting up the chess pieces for the next 30 chapters after, oh. and so... And you see, that's the problem with just coming out the gate. Because last episode, you just go, okay, y'all. I see what you're talking about when people say that this is the best arc. And you were 30 chapters in. You jumped the gun out this world. Now you got to run it back in the space of 30 more chapters. How did it Maybe don't come out the gate so hard and fast. Go, yo, know what? This was pretty good, but don't go, yo, this is. This I'm is excited to see what's coming next and all that. Oh, my jaw was dropping and all these the same buzzwords. Making you, our heart sore. And the same buzzwords you always use. Pull that back. This is for the next 30 chapters after, and so. Guess what I did? Yeah, you guessed it. This week I'm reviewing 60 chapters of Hunter Hunter's Chimera Ants arc because if I just did 30, all you would hear is about 15 minutes of complaining. And if living with my... Yeah, okay. Oh, okay, what's the yep, problem with go. that? What's the issue there? I was so ready to just start giving him kudos because we talked a lot about how YouTubers got to placate to the audience and just say things are good and whatnot. I was so ready to give him credit. By just, for just him going, yo, I, there's some stuff that I don't like. But what's wrong with just putting out a video of just going, these are my issues with this. This did not, these things did not, uh, it was set up in the first 30. It didn't pay off in this 30. So I'm wondering when it will pay off, why it didn't pay off here and here. There, there's merit in that. It's not all just positive, positive, positive parents has taught me anything it's that complaining gets you the wooden spoon now there will be make a joke make a joke and and, and brush off any criticism you could have possibly had for the overall 30 chapters you had just keep consuming so what would have happened if these 30 chapters didn't make up for the other 30 what would, what would have, have happened, happened if the rest of the series you absolutely i mean the rest of the arc you absolutely hated would you have just gone well i'm just gonna list a bunch of the positives and but it wasn't a very good arc and that's it it, it, if it was these 30 didn't pay, make up for it, would have been another 30? Would have just been a whole arc? What would have happened? And it, 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 I, like I said, I was so ready with all the stuff on Twitter. I'm like, okay, maybe he doesn't, but he's, he's just back, right back here. So whatever praise I can give him will be under the lens of, yeah, but he's also a coward as well. Get you the wooden spoon. Now, there will be some complaining in this review, and by some I mean quite a lot. Lord knows after constantly praising the story, but I will also hey, be praising it highly in the second half and where I think it's necessary. So strap in and strap on because we are about to go deep into this dense, thick series. I'm toying up, Mark. I'm not okay. And this is my rant, I mean, review of the Chimera Ants arc part two. So he goes, if I had just put out the first 30 chapters, it would have been 15 minutes of complaining. But this video is is almost 30 minutes. So is it going to be 15 minutes of complaining that would have been in the first 30 chapters and then 15 minutes of praising? Or is it just going to be, yeah, here are my problems, and 7 then, to 10 minutes, and then going into naught but positives for the last? We'll see. And then Raycon as well. I can't wait for another funny, funny skit so, advertisement. Yeah, it's, like, it's funny how much of that preamble stuff was all the later chapters and episodes which makes me believe he has almost no praise for the original 30 he read it's ridiculous it, it, just listen to his video and you can tell that because it is nothing so yeah as i said this week i'm covering 60 chapters instead of the usual and let me tell you, stuff happens, but also stuff doesn't happen a lot. Following Gon getting his Nen back after his fight with Knuckle, there's a lot of attention given to... 
I don't know if he means that nothing happens in that fight in particular, or is he just showed somebody laying down to indicate boredom, but he also showed that before. That fight is the consequence of not just a punch manga. It is a thinky, how do I get around this person sort of thing. That's the consequences of, because sometimes you're just going to have that. If, if, if the um, Darby fight was not so darn interesting, it'd just be some dude sitting down playing cards and, and wine coin don't, thing. Don't uh, f- yeah. overflow the glass. Yeah. So it's it's it, it is what it is when you when you start going outside of the realm of just bunch of monkeys. This one specific scene, and what a scene! Morel, one of the lead hunters spearheading the assault on the Chimera Ants alongside Natero, asks for Gun to prove himself by punching him, which ends up being a big mistake. Since the very beginning of this series, there's been a concerted effort to exhibit for us Gon's psychological state and how it determines the fate of himself, his enemies, and even at extreme points like this, his friends. Something that was mentioned maybe as far back as the Heavens Arena arc was that Nen is closely linked to your emotional or psychological state. I remembered that small pa- because I knew it would eventually translate to if someone gets big mad then they get big strong. And with a character like Gon, a small child searching for a father to know as emotionally unavailable or sort of weird at the very least, there's been, at least for me, a touch of dramatic irony because, as a reader, I'm aware of something Gon isn't. I'm aware that there will come a time where he's shocked or disillusioned by Jing, and as a result, this small piece of passing exposition concerning Nen will come into play. And shockingly, it did so much sooner than I thought. Not necessarily. Um... He could be disappointed by him, and that wouldn't lead to mass anger or any sort of real emo- emotions. Could just be a... Oh, yeah, crap. I doubt that he would even felt anger because the whole thing with Gon was, if you are willing to leave your wife and child to be a hunter, then being a hunter must be really cool. It must be a great job. It must be the most important thing in the world. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know if he would go up to game and be like, you are a piece of sh- and I'm going to fight you, because he didn't do it after the fact. He yeah. didn't even try to punch him or anything. How, how would that argument go? Like, why did you leave? Because being a hunter is fun and adventure and stuff. The exact thing that Gon thought it was. So then would he go raw anger? Especially since Gon is now a hunter and seeing how fun it can be with all the friends he's made and all the adventures he's had. The possible death of Kite, someone he deeply cares for, faced with what has already been done to him and wanting to get revenge on those that did it to him, Gon, when asked to prove his strength by punching an established and powerful hunter, proves in that moment that the emotional turmoil that resides beneath the surface of his cheerful disposition can fuel an attack more powerful than anything we thought he was capable of. Refraining from attacking at the last possible moment thanks to Killua, Gon could have in that moment killed Morel. Now, that's terrifying, and I think that while the main villain isn't all that compelling yet i mean he does get a little bit more compelling later i genuinely believe that I- can i say I'm, I'm starting to hate the word compelling oh no it, it's becoming another buzzword that just indicates that it is worthwhile content mm. uh this t- compelling in itself tells me almost nothing what would because pro- we are compelled by a train wreck is a train wreck a quality thing what would you prefer then uh compelling yes Ex- explanation. Not just saying uh, Miriam isn't compelling, but he gets a little bit more compelling later. That really doesn't say anything. No. Miriam is a f- uh, fairly flat character in that he's just evil and he's a bad man. Mm. But later on, we get a little bit more depth into him as he starts to learn what it is to uh, have man. strategy in the end. As opposed, that takes about fifteen seconds and says a lot <laughs> instead of just saying compelling. Ah, oh, crap! <laughs> now you're gonna start making me hate it. <laughs> what? What all of I made you hate? I know iconic is through. Kids next door, you side I hate. <laughs> After I said how racist mm-hmm. it was. <laughs> Not more, not more racist. More just like stereotypical. It it, it plays into the stereotypes. It, 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 yes, but without hatred. It's just yes. more, it's either born of just like, this is shorthand or just ignorance. It's like, 
well, what's wrong? It's either born of ignorance inner, or innocence. Yes. It's just like, hey, this is a Japanese girl, and this is cool. She's got the geisha arms and all that. Those get a little bit more compelling later. I genuinely believe that at this moment in time, he exists to act as a stressor for Gon. And somehow I feel, given the real meat of this material, the main portion of this conflict won't be found with the king, but perhaps, instead, the inner conflict between two... ...and Killua. You've clearly already seen this. Absolutely. Because you're going, uh, I think the king is a turning point of it, which he was not. But I think it's more about an internal thing. So you're already going in your mind that Gon does not fight this guy. Already. Cause, and, and the way that he does it, according to his editors, is he watches, I mean, he reads the 30 chapters or 60 chapters or whatever. And then he and some friends um, get into a Discord chat and watch important moments, big moments, things that might, um, you know, swelling music and things like that that might inform a certain moment. Something like this. This is a pretty good shot. So I can't imagine they're just silent throughout that. They're going to be like, and he, somebody let some slip that they don't even fight. And then that, that gets into his mind and, and then he writes it down and that informs all of this. Individuals gone in Killua. And while we're on the topic of Killua, I think I should address something that I wanted to speak on last week. While Killua removed the antenna Pause. from his head, I personally... You wanted to speak on it, but you didn't for some reason. He's going to explain the reason. I, I don't care. There was, you should. There's legit no reason why he couldn't. Don't even mention it if you're not going to bring it up. You just go, I wonder where this is going to lead. What, don't say you couldn't bring it up. Why couldn't you? I don't think he Are you on a couldn't. time crunch? I think he said, I wanted to bring up. But why? Then. Okay, why didn't you? Let's hear why he didn't. He's not going to explain why he didn't. I'm, I'm, I think he will. But I wanted to speak on last week. While Kittable removed the antenna from his head, I personally wasn't 100% sure what would come from this, but now having read... Okay, this is something I really do not like uh, with Mark. He puts like three qualifications to inform you that this is just his opinion. I personally wasn't 100% convinced that this was blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Just like in the beginning, uh, stuck with me personally and da da da, -da. Yeah. Like he, he wants to beat into your head that this is just what he thinks. Of course it is, Mark. But again, he, he, I'm sure he gets those comments that are just like, you're, be, you're not being objective or. Okay, but that's not going to stop because people are idiots. They are absolutely idiots, but he's going to temper it as much as he can. Because we get it as well. We get it so much. Too yeah. much. Yeah. And we're small. Mm -hmm. He, him big. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, if, if somebody doesn't, if somebody does like Thriller Bark and he, they go up in there and they're like, oh man, you said it's not good, but you're not being objective. And he, so he has to be and like, me I personally, Mark, I think, in my opinion, he has to hit those If I was words. Mark, I would go, that is not what objective means. Do you think that individual no. on the other side of the keyboard knows or cares? They got a set thing that they're fixing to say, and they're going to say it. Hey, I just went through a night of it. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you woke up at 2 a.m. to argue with some dude. I did not wake up at 2 a.m. to argue. I woke up at 2 a.m. and then <laughs> argued with somebody. <laughs> wasn't 100% sure what would come from this, but now having read ahead, I can confirm for myself that it is exactly what he said it was. An antenna manipulating him. All right, so time well, for my thoughts. From a Why would it be anything else? Mm -hmm. He said it was, he knew it was, the show showed us that it was. If it just went, no, it actually wasn't, it was actually nothing. That it was just a, um, a placebo type thing yeah. where it's just like, you just had to get over it. And it's just like, okay, Togashi, you just you just lied to us there then. For what reason? Now, it might not even be him. It might be Rumi uh, lying to Killua. Mm -hmm. And by extension, us, the yeah. audience, just follow what Killua said. But no, it was, it was just no. a legitimate antenna that controlled him. I, I don't see why he didn't go, this is a bit weird. This is a bit dumb. No character development here or anything back then. That's all. And you don't need to know where it's going to give your initial thoughts. Because when I saw that, I went, this is terrible. 
<laughs> and what did it end up being though? Terrible. Oh, oh no. Worse. Oh no, that can't be. <laughs> How? Oh no. <laughs> it is exactly what he said it was. An antenna manipulating him. All right, so time for my thoughts. From a fan standpoint, I really like that Killua is in control again, but from one, I'm a little uncertain. On one hand, it was great to see him physically overcome a hold his family has over him. This, as you know, plays into the themes of oppression and familial obligation Killua has been fighting against in the story since- You know what? I am 100% fine with what he did right there. Mm -hmm. He said it plays into the themes of familial oppression and all this extra stuff. He explained the themes. He explained how it tied into it while uh, breaking through the uh, oppression he had with the family. That was good. Mm -hmm. That's what I want from creators. Not just saying themes. Explaining the theme and how the thing that is currently happening ties into the theme. Me, on the other hand, no themes. <laughs> but what happened? Remember nah, back in the day? No you were like, no, that was, no what, what was that like episode 20, 25? That was years ago, basically. <laughs> you know, we've only been doing this for a year and a half. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I think we started in like November of 2019. Big yikes. ...plays into the themes of oppression and familial obligation Killua has been fighting against in the story since he joined it way back during the Hunter exams. However, and this is a big however, the implant in his mind, while not breaking any rules of the world, I think in a way it felt a little anticlimactic. Replacing what appeared to be a compelling and genuine case of psychological trauma with a tangible antenna, making for a yeah. quick solution to what was initially implied to be a much, much more complicated problem. Absolutely. And so after discovering and confirming that it was all just an actual antenna controlling a part of his actions, it felt as though a tremendous amount of potential was lost for a compelling yep. and intense story, which- awesome. Compelling again. Hey, shut up. <laughs> That was my number one criticism of just like, it's, it's there, it's done, there is no lingering effects or anything, he's moved on. There's no growth there, there's no development there, there's nothing. And and it didn't need to be like that. He just went, I need Killer to not be scared anymore. He put a th something in his mind, he took it out, he's not scared anymore. An intense story, which Hunter Hunter seems to be exploring more readily with Gon. Throughout the beginning of this story, Killua was trying to become a hunter. Seemingly, this was his first venture and decision made for himself and no one else. However, despite his internal desire to do something for himself, it was his family's dumb. Wasn't it his family that told him to go be a hunter? I believe it was. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think that was for himself his internal desire to do something for himself, it was his family's domineering presence that consistently prevented Killaba from achieving such. The whole, no matter how hard he tried, he would still be the person his family trained him to be. That reality and that theme was intense in this story. And it was compelling because we thought- Okay, so you go, according to you, Killaba wanted to be a hunter because of his own, because of what, this is something he wanted to do. He's branching out. But no matter how hard he tries, his family will stop him. He exited Greed Island, went into the, the hunter exam, beat everybody round one, and got his hunter license. That that was the sequence of events. This 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 critique does not hold water. Because they he was stopped exactly one time. Mm mm. Yeah, I don't know. I tried to look it up, but it's not a quick thing. Yeah. Okay. It was something deeply ingrained in Killua from a metaphorical standpoint and not a literal. This mind control device, in my opinion, sort of cheapens and fundamentally changes that entire yes. dynamic. It wasn't no, that boss. he might actually be like his family or that he... But it's also his opinion. He had to state that quite clearly it was his opinion. No. How could it... Okay, it is your opinion because it's not a provable thing that it cheapens it. But what is the argument that it doesn't cheapen it? Seriously. All that fear he exhibited and overcame, that was never who he was. So he didn't really grow. He just stopped being suppressed. It was like um, Captain Marvel. <laughs> yeah, like cheapens and fundamentally changes that entire dynamic. It wasn't that he might actually be like his family or that he can shake his upbringing or genetics or whatever. Instead, it was a piece of metal in his head and now that it's removed... 
over his destiny, it seems. Whether I take this as a metaphor or at face value, it is vastly less interesting to me than what I and I assume everyone else thought was going on. The reason why Killua is relatable in some instances is because he embodies that one kid that... I need to see comments for that exact thing just to see if anybody's defending this because I need to see the argument for this. I I don't, you know, I'm not in the Hunter Hunter stuff, but I have never seen an argument for this moment ever. But I've very rarely seen seen an argument against it. It's either um, very rare that an argument is against it or it's just brushed over because what what video have we seen that has talked about this? Even with the even that boring dude that was just like their relationship has changed. That was a bunch of about Killua. So it, it's just it's not re- talked about. It's just one of those things that is like, yeah, it's bad and uh, moving on. Where, oh, going whereas it's, you should be able to talk about this and explain it quite clearly as to why it's bad. I assume everyone else thought was going on. The reason why Killua is relatable in some instances is because he embodies that one kid that while having massive potential to do one thing, is held back by the bad teachings of his family to do another. Something like that can't be overcome just like that, but by truly fighting tooth and nail against those bad teachings over many, many years. Now, thankfully this moment Killua decides to flick that switch for himself does come an intensely emotional moment wanting- No. That emotional moment is dead because that's not who he is. Absolutely. It, it's just, he has the strength to easily behead him, but he's afraid. Why is he afraid? Because this dude is scary? Because they beat him before? Because he beat both Hit Gone and Killua before? No, because he's got something in his head. That's so, all it is. Does come about during an intensely emotional moment wanting to protect his friend, which is exactly what it needed to be. But again, the means with which this comes about seems deeply unsatisfying to me. But yeah, that's Killua, that's gone, and that's the stuff that happens in the first few chapters. So, what's next? Well, there's some cool introspective board game sequences with the King of the Chimera Ants and this little girl called Komugi. It's a really interesting way of coming to understand the character before he really starts to understand himself, asking himself questions like, who are you? Why are you here? What's your purpose? Throughout this section, the Chimera and King was giving me major Mewtwo Strikes Back vibes, and I can't be the only person who thought that either. At every crossroads he faces when left to his own devices, self indulges in a much more negative path or mindset. However, when all the cards or tiles are down with this little girl he respects, he shows a very different to himself. Outside of the beginning, this is the best stuff I thought that was covered in the story from yep. a narrative perspective. Absolutely. There's a clear parallel being established here with Gon and this Chimera and King, and I really can't wait to see how this develops further. It was really interesting to me. But the rest was... <sighs> That's right, now we gotta talk about my first week's material. Chapters 220 to 263 are almost entirely waiting. Heck, even the chapter titles are in on the joke here, literally counting down from 10 to 1. Initially, I thought this was funny, but then I realized that this portion of the story actually achieves very, (laughs) very little. Now, I'm sure most people wouldn't be bothered by this nearly as much as I was, but god damn, I was really bored. I'd even go as far as to say that the material after Gon's almost murder and before the palace attack might be the weakest in the series in terms of actual story progression and my overall interest. On Okay, uh, overall interest I can't speak to. Story progression, I don't care if a story progresses as long as good things are happening within whatever is happening right now. I wouldn't be- care if it was a 13 chapter arc of the Straw Hats just on their ship. If it's good. If it's just characters talking to each other, that's progressing character stuff. Man, I'm sure... Because 40 chapters, you're telling me that nothing happened? It was complete and total boredom? Do it like this, though. Death Parade has very little story progression. But it's amazing stuff within each episode. And that alone carries the entire series. Mm -hmm. So I don't need story progression. I don't need a lot to happen in the story itself. If whatever is going on right now is good to me. Let me just check out a random chapter from there. Uh, Let's go 236. 
That is a fight. Let's go 250. That is... That is homeboy going insane. And, oh yeah, that, that underground president Bush was kind of bad. <laughs> uh, 257. We got more of the Kamugi stuff, which is absolute money. You could have just talked about that. Don't, don't just go and bore it, because that's all that stuff is good. And then the king, is this the king when the king was just like, I'm going to kill this kid. Yeah, I, I'll do whatever I want. I am royalty. I'm the best. There's right a, before the raven attack. There's a lot that happens here. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, you got, this is where the... Um, it's two, a lot of story. It's not a lot of story progression, but it's a lot of progression. Yeah, 229 is when the phantom trooper fight in the chimera ants. Well, I, I was interested in a lot of their powers, especially Vacuum Girl. I love her. Yeah, especially since this is the first time that you see a couple of them. Plus, they got a new member. Yeah, there's a lot going on. I don't, I don't know. But not a lot of story progression. Is that all that matters to him? Uh, maybe, maybe he's more interested in the Gone and the Killua stuff. And it's a lot of like stuff away from Gone and Killua. Mm-hmm. And because of that, you don't. He's not getting that introspective flip of that he's just seeing a bunch of character progression and kind of slow moving hey here's the ants here's what they're doing blah 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 but you also got the kamugi stuff which is establishing the villain and his mindset his view on the world Mm -hmm. which informs the end of this uh arc and it's it's the a parallel to gone you can you can start theorizing about that which he did so what what is he yeah i'm just going yeah so let's just see the concept seems fine. Build tension slowly to this massive genocide planned by the ants, all the while the side of good makes preparations to stop this all from happening. And normally this would be a good idea. You need a cam before the storm in stories like this. But this cam spans across three entire volumes of the story. And in those volumes, the story felt like it had more padding than the 1990s version of the Dragon Ball Z anime. And this is a manga and as a result dragged the plot to a screeching halt sometimes even cutting away to characters that have quite literally nothing to do with this story for like five or six chapters at a time for the purposes of this video i had to read six or so volumes of manga and let me tell you this volume volume 22 delivered me an experience i don't think any manga i've ever read has given me and not a good one i found the material in this volume so insanely boring i actually had to step away for an entire day up to reading more of it. Now, before anyone goes off in the comment section saying that they loved it and that it's great for X, Y, and Z reason, that's totally fine. That's your experience. That's real. It's valuable. I can- no, shut up. I, I, See, I, he has to do all of that. No. Because he Just knows. Just say your opinion. If people take it that way and they want to cry in the mm-hmm. comment section, let them f- and cry. No, no. He, he, You're he, just putting your opinion out there and if they don't agree with it, they can say why, but- it doesn't invalidate your opinion nor theirs. Who gives a sh- Stop trying to prop up their opinion. Oh, that's your experience. Blah, 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 blah. And it's totally valid and it's totally good. And everybody's not going to be the same. And everybody's not going to like the same. And we're all different he's, people. He's not dealing with people as rational as that. He's dealing with people who go, you said Ooh. something bad. So you believe that it is bad and everybody should think that it's bad. But I don't think it's bad. The people that uh, took his Twitter stuff and ran over to Reddit, the Hunter Hunter Reddit, is just like, look at what Mark's saying. Thumb him down and blah, blah, blah. Did they? Uh, they posted it and a lot of people were talking in the comment section. <sighs> yeah, those type of people. The people that are just like... Uh, no, no, it can't be not good because of these reasons. Dude, Hunter Hunter fans are nuts. They're crazy. They're like, this is this is some sort of intellectual. This is saying something. This is doing something. And therefore, no matter what it says and does, it's saying something and therefore is good. No, DBZ isn't saying anything, so it's bad. But this is saying the duality between humans and animals and beasts. and You know what? That's a very good way to put it. 
I think a lot of people like Hunter x Hunter because they believe it says something. Regardless of the mechanics of whether the mechanics within are good or bad, mm -hmm. it's saying something. And that alone is a lot more than you will get in your atypical manga. So... Yeah. Clap for that because it's trying to say something. Yeah, look at that comment, dude, that you got. He just went all sorts of themes and concepts and perspectives rarely about anything that actually happens. It's just about what it means to the themes and everything. That's what people say. But then when it came to the One Piece stuff, it was all about the it last about fight. problems and stuff. You know why? Because... The One Piece is not about themes and stuff. It's not It's not as heavy as something like the Chimera Antarctic. So then you focus on the actual mechanics. But there's a lot of heavy on. stuff within the One Piece Absolutely. that is even heavier. Absolutely. But people aren't thinking about it like that. They're not thinking about it as a thinking man shonen like they are thinking about Hunter x Hunter. So when you think about Hunter x Hunter, you have to go, okay, how does this tie into the themes? What are the themes? What Blah, blah, blah. With One Piece, it's like... Well, why didn't Luffy just fly up and punch Doflamingo in Gear Fourth? <laughs> well, why not? <laughs> well, well, huh? Checkmate. <laughs> uh, because of this reason. Ah, you're just BSing away through it. What a justification. You suck. So that's what it is. If they're not thinking about anything that's bad or wrong with the story or how boring it is it's all about what it, not even what it's saying it's all about that it's saying something and then once it's up to you to interpret what it's saying not how it's said just nope, that it's just saying that it's something. saying something and then, and once then you, you piece get, it together once you get that something and then you interpret it in whatever way you want to then it is good because the the shell it's not very good. The water, the the dude with the cell phone versus smoke dude, that's just a fight. How does that tie into the theme of humanity and all that stuff? Well, it doesn't. So we're not talking about that. But we are talking about Gon and and his descent. We're talking about Killua and and Kamugi and Great Meruin morality, and morality and. and and how the, the ants uh, treat the king. And we're talking about all that. But I think at least that the way the ants treat the king is good. And that Absolutely. they all want the same thing. Which is the best for the king. But, but what they believe. Ways. Yes. Yeah. I believe that type of stuff is good. Mm -hmm. Great morality. What type of shit is that? There's a bunch of characters that are anti-heroes. No, anti there's not and only here. Did you see Gone being all more? He, Gone is mopey. And, and, but he's doing it for a good reason. Because he wants his friend back. So it doesn't matter how he goes about going with the great morality. It's all about that he's doing it. It doesn't matter that we've seen Kite for a collective eight chapters or so. It's all about what it's, it's just about. What it means to go. Yeah. And it's just the great morality. So it doesn't matter how the story progresses with it. It's just the fact that it's there and we can talk about it without talking about the actual mechanics of the show that away from you but mine is real i can't take that away from you mark really come on that's your experience that's real it's valuable and i can't take that away from you like five qualifiers i'm just like come on you, you guys you got your, your feeling you opinion and experience are real and valuable and i can't take it away from you mother and you have that is, and that's yours this? and I don't know if I don't know if he's coming from somebody who thinks like that, used to think like that, or knows how people think about things like this. Because yeah, he has he's to, been he on has the internet do... long enough and just seen a bunch of people. Oh, my opinion, though. So he has to do all of that, and that's I don't I I, I don't know if it's I should feel bad for him or I should just hate him for saying stuff like that. But mine is real too, and my God. I hated this volume. Nothing happens. To say that this volume absolutely and unequivocally annihilated the pacing of the story for me would be an understatement of a lifetime. At this moment in time, the Chimera Ants are... I, I, I'm, I hate pacing. That's my... They, I'm starting to get triggered by pacing. Because <laughs> it, it, it means nothing. It means nothing. It was well paced. Okay, what do you mean by that? It was poorly paced. What do you mean? But he, he just goes and destroys the pacing. In, in what way? The fact that it cuts away... Because these are ants that we saw break away going, oh, the queen is dead. Now we have our own domain. And I think the um these dudes were, this was outside of their hometown or a town that they liked and ants were terrorizing them. So they had to go get them. 
Something like that. Well, no matter what it was, it showcases the power of, of all the Phantom Troops. How stacking them up against ants that we know the, the abilities of and the powers of because we've seen Gone and Killer fight them. And then we have to go, oh, now uh, we know that Karapika has to beat all of them. How is he going to defeat uh, Pain Packer or, or Rotation Man? Things like that. So, I... It, Pacing. What do you? <laughs> that that's where it all started from. But it'd be an understatement of a lifetime. At this moment in time, the Chimera Ants arc's plot focuses on and draws our interest to characters like Natero, Kite, Gon, Killua, maybe smaller secondary characters trying to get us to know them, but predominantly those characters as they deal with the aftermath and plan to exterminate the King Chimera. However, in this volume, it consumes. 60% is spent with the Phantom Troop and shows us what other parts of the world are like now that the Chimera Ants have infiltrated their regions. Sure! No. Okay, so your problem is almost in exclusively that the plot is not moving forward. So, why does he like One Piece? Because a lot of the a lot of it is just the arc itself and it yeah. doesn't move the overall plot of the story forward. Yeah, they could have just pieced out from, or at least tried to piece out from um, Thriller Bark. But they went, let's go help. Let's go see that castle. There's a lot of just stop and do this. I. So, so again, it's not even that the fact that, has he said that this was bad? He said it was boring. But it's a bunch of fights and a bunch of stuff going on in the world and it's boring. But that doesn't speak to his quality. Because there's, there, like, um, there's some fights in DBZ that are technically good, but I find boring. Mm-hmm. Attack Stuff on like, Titan, I believe, is technically good, but I find it not interesting. Yeah, Kid Buu versus Goku is just like, yep, there we know the abilities and strengths of all these people. We know uh, there there's a ticking time. There's, oh, I'll help you for five minutes. Boo gets involved. Hercule gets involved. There's a lot of stuff going on. I don't find it interesting, though. So, I don't find Gohan and Cell interesting, at, like at all. Period. Because it's like, come on, dude, wrap this up. Be <laughs> think. I wonder what role the Phantom Troop will play in this arc. How will they affect the developing personalities and struggles of the main cast? Well, they don't. Of course. Uh, how do you know that if you haven't read the Ooh. rest of it? Ooh, I was going in a different direction, but you are absolutely correct. <sighs> Dang, you. He right. probably asked his friends, "Hey, do the Phantom Troops come back?" And they said, "No." Well, that that's that's already a, in it. now it informs your decision yes. of this because you wanted to wait on that killer with stuff to see what happens, so you ain't want to say it right then. Wow. But then you saw more and went, what "Oh no, it's just an antenna." Trash bag. Just an antenna out of my head. Never mind. But where I was going was, I would have loved to see what Hisoka was doing, even if it didn't affect the plot. It's about characters that we, you you said in, because I skimmed the, the York New City arc, you said that the Phantom Troop were interesting. You said that we get to see their dynamics and stuff, and we don't get to do that with other anime bro, what? antagonists and things like that. What? Yeah, same old buzz. Right? What? Stuff like that. We I'm, saw I'm, the Shiki Buka I'm eating phrasing, dinner. I don't know exactly if he said this or how he said it. It's just, this was three weeks ago as I was skimming, but he said something to that effect. And if he didn't, Let's just assume that he did because this is this is totally not Mark. But I'm pretty sure he did say something like that. But it's it's seeing what these characters are doing, how they are matching up against Chimera Ants. It's what, five, six chapters, thirty minutes that takes, especially since it's fights, not not explaining anything. You look at the picture, you move on, oh that's how they beat them. It's not it's not anything it's, it, and it's characters that we know and we already saw, cause they fought like um one of the one of the Chimera, Chimera Ant generals, and we had already seen her when Marilyn was born, and we know her and her abilities and everything. So it's it's all there. But boring is just boring is a very, it, it's not too much you can say against boring. Past. Well, they don't. It was here I was forced to realize the Phantom Troops' greatest weakness. Also, for me at least, they're sort of an ensemble. Pause. For me, at least, the Chimera as greatest weakness for me, in my opinion, personally. What is this video if not mostly your? <laughs> <opinion>? <laughs> 
So why do you why? need to keep qualifying it by going for me, in my opinion, my experience, so on why and so forth? Why not forth? just in, in, in the beginning just flash up a little car and go, unless stated otherwise or things that definitively happen, mm-hmm. like Gone is about to punch a smoke dude, these are my opinions. Why not just put that? This this video is mostly opinions and synopsis. And that's the end of it. There are some objective qualities like the Phantom Troop do not interact with Gone and Killua. And I will speak on that with my opinion. And then you cease qualifiers like these because these are so annoying. Also, for me at least, they're sort of an ensemble. Characters like Uvo in York New City was given the most characterization during that portion and he died. Additionally, the character of Paku received a similar amount of endearment to me as a reader for the exposure and stresses she was put under during that material too. Unfortunately, both of these characters met untimely ends during that material, leaving only one other character that received any meaningful exposure to us as an audience, and that was Nobunaga. And he wasn't. And hey, guess what? Now we're getting meaningful exposure? For the other ones. For the other ones? As opposed to the next time that uh, Karapika sees them, they're just a faceless group of a bunch of people that we know have interpersonal relationship. And what about the, 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 the vacuum girl? She with her whole forgetfulness. What are you talking about? She didn't do that. That great. I, I she love She never met that. them. She never once met them. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, don't, don't even. <laughs> Oh, I guess they were mistaken. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> she goes back to her reading. That's great. That's such great characterization right then and there with so little. And you all, and I remember this part. You you said that um, we see how um, when they were killing people in York, New City, we see how they all go about it. Like a homeboy who who um, just stands in the shadows and he has like a controller thing. He goes, oh no, my toy broke. And he goes, oh, he considers these people's toys. And then you see people just like out, out and right just punching their heads off. And he, he talks about how they go about things like that. So we're, we're just getting characterization. And you're going, we got characterization for other people. But they're dead now, so now never again? Or only when the plot calls for it? Or what are you saying with this? Present in this material for the Chimera and Ark at all. Because of this, I found myself spending the bulk of an entire volume following characters I was Luke off against enemies that are very much secondary while also not furthering the story in any meaningful way. The scene exists to expose us to more of the troop and it succeeds in that effort, sure, but outside of maybe showing us what other places are like dealing with the ants, this portion of the material does little else at this moment in time, which made it difficult to sit through for me if I'm being perfectly honest. For me, if I'm being honest. Perfectly honest. So it, it, it shows what's going on in the world, how the ants are branching out, how they're dealing with people, eating them, controlling them and whatnot. It shows how a, a established group is dealing with the ants. It shows their abilities. It shows their interpersonal relationship because when um, Vacuum Girl, she gets all her clothes ripped off, when they're walking around in the desert, that dude gives her his, his coat. So, so that she's covered up. And that's like, it's never established. It's never stated. It's never shown. But we see that happening. But we, we, but we see her with the, that coat. So we know that that happens. Mm-hmm. So what? It, it's character stuff. It's world stuff. It sure doesn't advance the plot, but... But Plato. <laughs> Plato. Did the plot uh, go for how, it? How does Robin versus the big fat priest do advance the plot? Uh, he would have taken the ship. No, he wouldn't have. He, he was at the ship. He was at the ship. Yeah, but we don't know what he wanted to do with the ship. He might have broke it. That would have that would have halted a lot of things. That would have changed the entire course. Was he at the? Was he at the? Yes, ship? he was at the ship. Her, her fight was at the ship. Gadatsu yeah. and uh, Chopper was not at the ship. No, I could have sworn because uh, it ended like in the middle of a room. Well, you know what? Goes, I might be thinking about uh, you. Um, you did an AMV, and I might be thinking about the same link. 
where something happened with Robin. Yeah, because I, I know that um, Nami had her fight on the ship with those two, with the two um, ball dudes. Mm-hmm. But Robin had hers in the middle of a, a of a of a ruin because she goes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. So how uh, does, she? Uh, if she would have lost, she would have gotten to the goal. No, 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 no. How does that fight advance the plot? The plot of the story. Yes. Uh, she she found out that wasn't the poneglyph she needed. No, she if needed that to... fight doesn't happen, what happens to the story? Uh, Take that fight out, nothing changes. She doesn't know that there what have what the reading on that and that Roger can read the he can see the no. voice of all things. No, thank you, pressing play. No, if she walks up and then just reads it as opposed to somebody going, "Hey, you can't read this stuff." Nothing changes. Yeah, but it, it would have stopped her progression. What to... progr- Oh, okay. So progression, not plot. <laughs> yeah, the, the plot progression. Oh my of goodness! Moving forward. It was an obstacle. And, you know, the fights are Take the obstacle. that obstacle out, nothing changes. Yeah, what's that mean? It's not plot relevant. What, the fight? Yes. Fights are usually not plot relevant. Okay, not then. Plot. then. That's not saying nothing. <laughs> I mean... That's what this is. Okay. So, if he's going, this doesn't advance but the plot, a, it's and it's a, just a fight. And so, it's not a, relevant to the plot but it's a plot relevant fight in that the people that are relevant to the plot are fighting as opposed to these people on the side that have nothing to do with the fight mm-hmm. I meant the plot fighting but he doesn't know that no, but he does, he does. No, but he does. <laughs> the pacing really was destroyed pacing. Now, if I want to be completely fair here it's entirely possible that their presence may on the story beyond no, what I've read today no. and Seriously, Lord knows I hope that. all See, that time I spent really cool. reading it was worth something but even if they do the means with which they are integrated is about as subtle as chronic dysentery anyway to cut a long story short Killua meets character development and Gon meets plot device they all meet up and all seem to be in place for some story progression finally now as we move on to the past assault uh, Tagashi decides to implement so you're not gonna talk about how the plot device is bad. You're not. You're just saying that he is a plot device, and just moving on. Not how it affects the world. Not that this is just some traitor ant who has a very specific knowledge and abilities that help them. Not that it's just this traitor octopus ant that goes through a lot of development that ultimately means nothing. You're just gonna say it and move on. Yes. Okay. And some significant Why changes. Why I expect anything Changes else? that I think are best exemplified through this quote from the manga. Something totally not Mark thought was quite strange was the sudden participation of a disembodied narrator. From Mark's experience with the manga, he didn't recognize this as a regular occurrence. Uh, and yet, by the time the things thing. started to that really kick off thing. in chapter That's 263, the, the narration has already been going on for years. Mark decided to do some investigating and went to check out how this was handled in the anime and found essentially the exact same thing happening. Without this precedent having been set earlier, seeing it suddenly come out of nowhere in the manga felt like a strange choice to Mark, and he would argue that perhaps even more so in the anime. Mark feels that this isn't the anime's fault at all. They are adapting the manga, is what you might hear him we say if he it. actually had we any dialogue during that, this part of the video. We understand that Mark it's going feels as though people could argue that this helps is, to make these events feel It is paralleling the Hunter Hunter going long. We got it. Hey, how long do you think this goes on? Uh, 20 more seconds, but that's still too long. We got it. Uh, how long, okay, how long do you think he talks about the narrator? Oh, the narrator. I thought you meant just as The narrator. narration itself. Yeah. Two minutes. Not too long. He, he got better stuff to do. Because he said that the latter half is his praises. And he understands that argument. But for him, this only served to sort of take him out of the story. It made him feel as though he, Mark, was reading about someone reading a story to him. Little bits of this here and there wouldn't bother him. But for multiple chapters back to back, Mark just thinks it's a very odd decision and at times acts as a bit of a crutch. Now... Mark is open to being corrected on this point if you feel he's wrong, but he... Mark felt it was an odd point, but he is open to being corrected that it absolutely wasn't an odd point to him? You didn't feel this way, Mark. (laughs) Oh, I guess I didn't. (laughs) 
Wow. I, I found that boring. Let me correct you. You found it enjoyable. Oh, I because guess I, of these reasons. I, I guess I did. I my bad. <laughs> he believes this is an almost meaningless example of telling and not it showing. Most certainly is an especially egregious offense in a medium that makes showing extremely simple. This reads as if it was a book devoid of pictures. The reason this makes Mark a little more annoyed than perhaps it should is that usually things like this telling instead of showing is the result of a lack of narrative preparation. Stories with no build-up typically suffer from this. An example of this that Mark would give, if not for the fact that his thoughts are inexplicably being narrated right now, is the last Airbender movie. Yeah. Katara's narration in this film tells us that Sokka and Princess Yue became fast friends Terrible. and fell in love. It does this bizarrely instead of showing us, as the series did through slow build-up. Narration here got is being used got as a crutch. That's unfortunate. Now, this That's arc spent is. the best part of 40 chapters building up to an event, and now Mark has to sit through what he believes is clunky expository narration as this place is being infiltrated. We're about to go past there are this, things discussed during this time Wait, in detail, do... like Knuckles' ability to read a person's aura level. And from this, now, here's what, Mark here's thinks what's going he knows on why the arc is... Um, this is Mark's thoughts, but instead of him going, I, he replaced it with Mark and told somebody else, to read this. Yeah, instead of going so, um, I and me, he did uh, him and he. Mark yes. and he. Yes, yeah, so this is going to be, he's, he's just going to be like, and those were my thoughts. And then he's going to move on. Then it's going to be a his advertisement for Raycon. And then it's going to be the positives. A few chapters prior, Tagashi said he was sorry for the long wait and expressed concern that many people sorry may have for forgotten the things at this too. point. And so... Right now, it's Mark's theory that Tagashi is providing this narration not for people like Mark, who recently read all of the story in one go, but instead has structured it this way to help keep people in the loop as they read the weekly releases in Shonen Jump after the long wait. In volume form... I'm sorry, what? No? Mm -mm, absolutely not. Because uh, all he's doing is saying what's happening in the moment and yes. not the thing that happened in the past. It's not like a previously or this lead, this, this, he's doing this action as a result of this action that happened in a previous chapter. It's not what happened. So, no. Mm. This isn't a good thing. Going up the stairs. Literally every single meaningful aspect of every fight and using a fucking elevator are all narrated to the reader most efficient assassinations of an arc Mark thinks he has ever witnessed. Made all the more frustrating for Mark because he has endured over 30 chapters of effectively tenuous build-up, all for it to mean basically very little at all, as Mark sees it. These are characters Mark feels he's been forced... As Mark se sees it, these are characters that Mark feels. Stop saying these Things we know it's your opinion. Yes, we know these are your feelings. But he's he's open to having them changed. Yeah, how he what he thinks. But but I'm open honest. to be told I'm wrong about something. I'm not open to having my feelings change on a thing. This I, I felt it was odd. No, you didn't. This is going way too long. <laughs> Yeah, but that's Mark's point. Yes, it I know that's the point. Yeah, I yeah. understand. So isn't that's it good point. now? But that doesn't change the fact that it's not it's not going on for too long. To spend an ungodly amount of time with over the course of the arc, and for no real reward. Mark believes people could completely skip the first half of Act Two, in fact, without really losing anything of substance. It's explained to the reader in no uncertain terms, according to Mark. There's no subtext, as Mark sees it, nor anything to infer. It is quite literally telling the reader what is happening, again, according to Mark. In his last video, Mark admired and praised the beginning of this arc for its use of subtext and dilemma, saying questions with no answers produce the best stories. Oh well, my goodness, this, with that to use the layman's yeah. terms, yeets all of that out the window. As far as Mark is concerned, by telling the reader in no uncertain terms what everyone is thinking and feeling and why they are thinking and feeling it. It sucks all of the drama out of the scene, for Mark, of course, and now he feels as though he's being told a story about this event rather than actually experiencing it with the characters he's developed a fondness for. Mark is immeasurably frustrated, and he is still not done. 
when thinking about what Tom was talking about, when talking about what Mark had been talking about, when talking about Hunter Hunter, in the end, I just couldn't understand what they were talking about. At this point, you've probably heard of Ray Link in the description or go to 50 and Alex, I'm Alex. What will you learn? That your actions have consequences. <laughs> Additionally, there are further changes made not just to the story, See, you but laugh. to the visuals. One of the thoughts to reading a manga for me was the visceral gore that accompanied the different for changes me. that took place without compromise. Many different anime adaptations opt to what gore was there? That was a, a shot with just a bit of blood splatter and a bloody mouth. We don't even see him eating her. There's no there's no arm, there's no leg, it's just a bloody uh, mouth. Maybe the sinew over there on the second, uh, right there on the top. Because it looks like meat is flying from being eaten. But that's still just some chunks. Basically nothing. That's not gore. We've seen it, it, it. We've seen people get beheaded in One Piece. I mean, <laughs> without compromise, many different anime adaptations opt to censor the gore that would otherwise be present in the manga. And while this can be, a sometimes it can really take away from the power of a scene. But now, for whatever reason, as I'm reading, the great artwork gets obstructed by this weird sort of out of place black shading texture box. It's a travesty. Now I can't see someone holding a bunch of thumbs or see someone's head get twisted off by Kilowa. I demand my fist of thumbs. Furthermore, throughout these 60 chapters, well, there were some that. great I moments never, that I enjoyed. I don't know exactly if, if that's the only time. He, why didn't he show the head getting twisted off and show the black box there? these 60 chapters there were some great moments that i enjoyed too moments that made my life easier as i waded through this material that wasn't connecting with me at all however most of them unfortunately came with some sort of caveat anytime that chitu clashes with morel is a pretty fun affair employing a great strategy on behalf of the protag while making full use of the nen power system his oh. first alter well, see he likes it so it was just him showing somebody laying down and sleeping. No, and he might be talking about it's with caveat. The caveat might be the end of the uh, fight. But no, but he said any time that those two clashed. Yeah, okay, but he's still going to... He might go accept for the end. But that's not that's not how words work, yes, unfortunately. Is. Anytime uh, they clash, if blah, 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 uh, like, blah, 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 except this one moment. Then why did not just go most of the time? Or with the exception of this one moment. Uh, because Mark's not very good. <laughs> but it is an acceptable way to put it. I, I, there's a better way to put it. Yes, absolutely. If, but if, if indeed this is where he's going. Yeah. Gee, I'm while making full use of the Nen power system. His first altercation alongside Knuckle is great, but his real power is on full display in his second fight with Chitu, wherein we see his cunning and patience used to full effect. In this arc, battles are won not just well, on see, feeling and strength it. alone, but through patience and measured approaches, something that Gon isn't exactly on so, board with right now. So he just uh, it. We don't know yet. No, he says that no, it's put on full yet. effect. We don't know what yet. What else could he say here? Unlike with Gone. Gone is impatient. Homeboy is patient, and though therefore he won. He wouldn't go, his patient is put on full Wait, effect. Wait, hold on. What did he just say? It's unfeeling and strength alone, but through patience. Let me go back a little bit more. Wherein we see his cunning and patience used to full effect. In this arc, battles are won not just on feeling and strength alone, but through patience and measured approaches. How many um, series don't have an arc that do something like this? Um, because I don't think this is a mark for a positive. And how many times within this arc itself has it happened? I think it only happened twice, and that's both times with Morel. Is this one, and it's when he blew uh, air against the cell phone dude. Yeah. Everything else is just punch monkey stuff. True. Yeah, Killua does just sort of behead those two, and behead the um, him, the butt dude. Um, 
as far as you going, what show doesn't have this type of stuff where they have to thinky? Even Dragon Ball had arcs where it was just it's stinky time. It's not just punch monkey time. Especially your early on Dragon Ball, where it's like yeah. I'm just a big smelly man. How are you gonna beat me? <laughs> no, but it's a praise for this as well. You can so- you can praise this for also doing it. It could be a point in the video to go, look, these are characters who are talking and have feelings. Look, all of this anime is colored. It's not all in black and white. So that means it's a point of praise. You can do that. It's fine. And measured approaches. Something that Gon isn't exactly on board with right now, but I'll be sure to talk about that a little later. Outside of that, the character of Knuckle gets some tremendous treatment in this material. Yep. While I didn't really care at all about Shoot, Knuckle was a personality okay, that was I thought the he was going to say that he didn't care about Knuckle. I was like, oh, 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 I'm flying to England or wherever to piss you are. <laughs> personality that was the clear highlight among all of the new characters for me. He's active, funny, and personable, endearing himself to me almost immediately in the earlier material covered last Pause. week with further burst... Why don't you mention that? Uh... What? Why didn't he mention that he liked Knuckle during his his pivotal fight and learning moment and teaching moment. Because it was about was going. going and the questions yeah. and with no but, answer. But you could still go I really... And the room with no doors and you, you kick it down. You break down them mother... It was. And she lost! <laughs> it's so good because she immediately is in the ground. It's great! Um, But yeah, this it, it, it's, it's such... He, he he really maybe needs to switch over to full arcs because he's just I don't know how he feels about Knuckle just going from the first video. He's talked about Kamugi and and Merwin for exactly like forty seconds. What he needs to do this is what I would have liked for Mark to do from now on: read the entire uh, arc and then write it out. And even if you split it into three videos instead of one long hour and a half video. You could do it that way, but at least you have all the information you need. Mm -hmm. Because right now, it's less of a review and more of just reactions heading up to it. Because you can't really review the entire, the arc in its entirety until you have the entire thing, or at least a good enough chunk of it to get the feel for it. Well, I can't even say that. It's not like a video game reviewer where you could play 70% of the game and be like, okay, I I mostly get it, so I can review it now. This is, you need the complete story to review it because it's only a story presented to you. Yeah. So, you, I would very much like for that because off the bat, he jumped in with like, this is the iconic arc of Hunter Hunter. Yeah. And it's one of the greatest things and it's made me feel ways I've never done. It's, I've seen things I never thought was possible. And then 30 chapters later, it's like, this oh, is the no. most boring oh, this, I have ever read. Trash. I cannot believe how terrible this is. And it, and if he goes over to the whole full art thing, he could just go because it, it's very odd that he go he did it with one piece. He full art. He Thriller Bark is just one video. Dress Rosa is one video. Whole Cake is one video. But yeah, if he does that, he could if he wants to keep the blind stuff. I think he could, Dress Rosa is two videos. It could be. I could just be lying. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, he did multiple videos for some of the longer ones. But but for something like this, he could just go. My initial thoughts with this, thinking about where this would go, is this. And it actually went here, and I am surprised and happy because of subversion. Yeah, he can even split it up into two sections. He can go his initial reactions while filming, while reading the chapters in the 30 increments or whatever he wants to do. And then a full review of the series and arc itself. Mm Mm-hmm of awesomeness this week after the assault on the palace and this palace is where things start to really kick off chapter 263 to be precise something falling from the sky that's caught pito's attention and it's natero these subsequent Not chapters lame. are total highlights and I'm certain, given the extent of what I can only describe as insufferable build-up, I'm sure once the anime covered this material, people must have been extremely excited given that Natero is acting like a total boss and we get a very punchy backstory. What I think is interesting concerning this material though is that from the moment he arrives to the moment I reach 60 chapters in, Natero wasn't shown attacking the king at all. In fact, we don't see him attack, period. For the entire 
entire time he's present, instead... Oh, sweet baby Jesus. So this is another... Your... You have done 200 Hunter videos, Mark, and in both instances, you were objectively wrong. And could not go back and record it because this piece of analysis hinges on him not attacking. I would submit on no, this one. Not. On this one. It probably was harder because he had to read 60 chapters and do the yeah, entire true, analysis. True, true, true. And it's still a week within a week. Mm-hmm. On this one, I will submit, maybe it was a little harder. Maybe it was everything got pushed back a little later. Mm-hmm. On this one, I will submit. The last one, hands up. But I mean, it's, Charlie, want to party with me? It's almost exactly the same amount of time as the last one. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Because he's just doing an overarching thing. Well, to be fair, there's a whole middle section he didn't like, which is just like two minutes worth of talking. It's like nothing's happening here. It's just progression. Mm-hmm. Blah, blah, blah. He didn't talk about the palm date. He most certainly did not. I guess that wasn't what he didn't like. He just thought it was icky. But why not? But, but he did say it was icky on Twitter, but he didn't bring it up. Maybe he's going to bring it up. He's not going to bring it up. Maybe he's going to talk about the positives of the palm date. And then we are way too far into this arc to talk about it. But maybe. Oof. Maybe. Okay. Sure. I do. I give these creators way too much. too much. Way too much. I understand. The focus is on the King Chimera, who's acting completely different to what they had anticipated. With Kilo's grandfather dipping due to how different this situation was, with the King totally dedicated to the protection and healing of the blind girl, he instructs Pito, his strongest foot soldier, to heal her while he deals with Natero farther away to keep her safe. And while we don't- He does not instruct her, he requests it. Yes. That is a big difference. Can you do this for me? He asks that of her. As opposed to just going, you do it, you worm, or your neck is already separated from your head. <laughs> to the point that Pito noted it. We don't see that fight. We do see something extremely interesting instead of that as the hero team rushes to the compound. <laughs> And just like that, as if by magic, out of nowhere, this scene catches my wavering attention and gives it a much needed kick start. And while I can say that my enjoyment of it wasn't at least a little bit affected by what came before, I most definitely did thoroughly love this. There are some truly beautiful moments that made exceptional use of the manga format. In chapter 275, the difference in the composure and mental stability between Gon and Killua is on full display for all to see. It's stark and it's brilliant. With Gon's crumbling face on the top of one page, and once I turn to the next, it's Killua's calm self there to reassure him. Choices like these really help to visually sell me what's transpiring in this- Um, sorry, hold on. Why? There's oh, a whole no. different section oh, there. Oh no, that's a whole page. Now I understand, you know, it's you see this page and then you see the next, but there's a lot of stuff going on in between this face and the next. Face. There's a panel underneath it. There's a whole page. Please sell me. Oh, he it just material. needs to be as flowery as possible. He goes, oh, I need to figure out how to do the justice. Ah, here we go. Yeah. I don't in this material. Watching as Gon barely clings to his sense of reason while Killua tries to bring him back from the brink like he's done all so many times in the past was possibly the most compelling instance in this story. Pause. Mi- See? Doesn't matter how or why or it's just what matters is what. The fact that this is happening. Not the fact that he is acting so irrationally. Not the fact that he threatens to murder a blind child. For speaking. For speaking. Not the fact that Pito is doing everything to prostrate herself in front of them. It's just the fact that he's acting so irrationally when we know that Gon is a good and loving kid and he's doing it for a good reason. These drawings force you to feel as Gon does. Conflicted, angry, devastated, and oh, str- There is no confliction. No. We he's know- a crap. We know about Kamugi and their relationship. We know that she is not a fighter. We know that she caught a stray arrow. 
These are all things that we know. Gon is acting very irrationally. That is the answer. There is no. Would you have felt here. as conflicted if Gon had punched Pito and then Kamugi died? Because that was a possibility. Because he was winding up for it before Seriously. Killer was saying something. He was like, "Oh, oh, you about to get this? Here comes this rock." <laughs> But I, I wouldn't even feel conflicted if we got 0% of the um, King and Kamugi stuff. Because it's still Pito, who we know is a is a killer, protecting a girl and going, I need to heal this girl. I'd be like, okay, let her. It, it's, it, it looks like a girl that doesn't have any ant features. And she's explaining, the King asked me to. I still like it. would be like a seventy thirty, just like maybe there's something going on here, but the confliction would not be there like that. All of these swirl in his head as he desperately tries to find any excuse to unload all of this on Pito. But reality sinks in. Pito is reasonable and shows how serious they are in this encounter, forcing Gon to explode in frustration, though a frustration he's willing to make peace with. One hour, Pause. he will wait. That is, look at that dark energy. Nobody else has displayed a dark energy like that. Is this a, a is this because of his emotions? Or is this lazy shorthand to go, no, evil? <laughs> what do you think, sir? <laughs> I don't know, actually. <laughs> He's willing to make peace with. One hour. He will wait one hour and then Pito has to heal Kite. If there's any takeaway I have for this scene, it's that it helped to restore some hype in me for the conclusion of this arc and elevate my hype levels for another awesome scene. See, and he's done. This is all Close. great action. Oh, that this is great action. No negatives on that. No negatives. A absolutely positive. There's conflictions and there's a question without an answer, which he likes. He's like, uh, remember when uh, me and Mike were discussing Bass V Soup's trailer versus the uh, Force Awakens trailer? Mm -hmm. And Mike was talking about how he likes mystery and that was palpable and something to bite on and blah, 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 blah. I think that's what this is. He likes the mystery surrounding the question itself as opposed... He likes the mystery surrounding the question as opposed to the question itself. Mm -hmm. This is all great action. And after watching this dude brutalize both shoot and knuckle respectively, which by the way was way better than I anticipated it being, the combination of shoot sacrifices, knuckles tenacious desperate strategies, all leading up to Killua's last minute save made for one hell of a beatdown that produced some of the most electrifying Killua moments. Overall, and with us heading into the final act, which I assume will be awesome, or at least I hope it is, I'm left feeling a little conflicted. On one hand, I can absolutely see and appreciate why so many people love this arc. There's plenty of pivotal character arcs either being stressed or paid off. Involved How so if you said that there was some 40 chapters of absolute boredom? How is it getting paid? Are you talking about just gone in Killua? Because we're getting a lot of Kamugi and Merowin stuff that you have not talked about. I'm so shocked because that's the good stuff. That's the great stuff. <laughs> that's where the money is. And he's just like, narrator for 15 minutes. We got it. What about this great developing relationship? What about this great, dumb, dumb, earnest character? You will play this, or I'm gonna kill you. No, heal your arm. <laughs> oh, I tried to trick you. I apologize. Let me apologize by ripping my own arm off. Are paid off. It involves some of our favorite characters from the past, and it even succeeds in introducing us to plenty. You show Nero, uh, Metero, blah, Netero, and the grandfather of the Zoldic family, the grandfather who have, we have seen twice since here. And Netero, who had, we have seen a couple of times. These are not our favorite characters. I don't know if this was you or the editor, but by you just going seeing our favorite characters, you're not uh, d discussing it or developing it at all. So this is a flaw with both of y'all. 
some of our favorite characters from the past, and it even succeeds in introducing us to plenty of new endearing faces, all the while putting on some great action. However, I can seem to get past the various choices made and pacing issues this arc suffers pacing. from, in my opinion. At no point In my I... opinion, pacing, in my opinion. Dude. You got the da double whammy yeah, right there. Just a double dab. It's my goodness. <laughs> Read through of any of the other arcs in this collection, did I feel as bored as the middle of this arc left me? Now, I'm always on board for a slow build up, but I thought this was a little excessive. While I'm sure the Phantom Troop have a large fan base, I can't help but feel like their section was largely a waste. From a broader story standpoint, I that they were struggling or agonizing over the perfect strat for entering this hostile situation with the Chimera King. Choices like that helped to build credibility for the third act or climax. But at the end of the day, I still felt as though that they spent entirely too much time setting it all up considering every story's plan eventually goes wrong to create conflict. So in my mind, I was waiting for this story to get moving so that they could make a plan because I knew that this plan would eventually fall through and they would have to like they are doing right now. And I don't need to be a genius to figure that one out. I mean, plans are made specifically to be broken so that tension can rise. And what personally really annoyed me is that I didn't even need to they technically understand the plan nope. because when developed. everything is narrated from what the characters do to what they think to what their individual plans are, it doesn't require anyone in the audience to understand their plan. The information during the narration is so precise and on the nose that it completely took me out of the experience and removed the best part of reading a manga for me, the subtext. And so now that I've been covering this story for a while, settling in somewhat for me the strongest arc still might be the hunter exams it starts it with is. a bang it is Wait, but he's here. not done with this yeah it's again him jumping the gun it's him going this is the best art i can see why yo this is kind of trash but um it's still the hunter arc is still the best for me which it probably is no it's not probably can you name a better one zaldic didn't really have any issues but then again, it didn't have Hisoka. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> and Hunter Exam, you got both Hisoka and Hat Girl. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hunter Exam is the best arc in all of Hunter Hunter. Dotted throughout were interesting pieces really of characterization, hat. there were magnificent revelations throughout, and most importantly, there was a clear understanding as to where we were going, and there was subtext. If your audience thinks it knows where it's going, as a writer, that gives you a lot of power to plan seeds and switch things up. To this day, I still think that subversion if your audience knows where the story is going that gives you a lot of seeds to switch stuff up yes subversion equals sign good no matter what just the fact that you are subverting means that it's good power to even if you think that it's gonna subvert if it doesn't subvert that in and of itself is a subversion and therefore is good. Even switch things up. To this day, I still think that narratively one of the strongest moves Hunter x Hunter ever pulled off was Gun versus Hanzo the Ninja before quickly cutting to the end. That gave me the feels, bonded me to the character, maintained snappy pacing, and it surprised me massively. And the most frustrating thing about this arc, the Chimera Ant arc, is that it's brilliant on paper, and yet its presentation totally sucked me out of it. The best scene for me within this material, hands down, that I cover today, has to be gone scene with Pito and Killua. And oh, why? But you talked about it for maybe a minute and a half. That's more than enough. I, and you talked about the Kamugi Miro and stuff. For the main villain, understanding his perspective, watching him learn and grow. Watching him learn to care for somebody else. Watching the reactions of all three of his guards. All three of which we are in conflict with. And he mentions it for less than 30 seconds. The reason why this moment is good is because of the Miro and Kamugi relationship. And you forego that to talk about just Gon's reaction, basically. Why did the bird attack Kamugi? 
that was a plot bird. It needed to happen. Dude, there's a lot of convenience that happens <laughs> right at that moment. That the is. king goes, I want to kill this bit. He goes into the room to kill that bit. She's getting attacked by a bird, and he instinctively protects her and goes, why did I do that? Would he have killed her if the bird wasn't there? And just be like, no, now you die. That's a question without an answer. Ah, that, so it's so interesting. That is the only bad Kamugi uh, Mirowin scene, but it also had a really good moment where she was just like, I didn't want to disturb y'all when, when it's night time and you could be Yeah, sleeping. so she's just crying that's, quietly at the third That's attack. good. That's good. The, the random eagle, kill it. <laughs> D- trash. Back then, we thought about better things. <laughs> Dude, I had a mouthful of water. That was your own fault. <laughs> I didn't know you were <laughs> that eagle thing killing. <laughs> but yeah, we talked about other things that they could do, like glass being broken and her not being stuff like her that. not being able to move through it because she's stuck in a corner in the bathroom yeah, something and there's like glass that. everywhere. Some easy like that, but not or a... uh, even uh, I can cut you off. Yes. Uh, uh, even with the bird thing, she bumps to a table and bird seed gets in her hair yeah. or something from home. So she's walking around and all through the day, birds are trying to yeah, get at her, and easy. then this giant falcon thing comes. But but it's just oh, I guess birds just attack mother. In in their own house, and 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 it just happens randomly right now, and just to show how much that, like I said, that's the one bad moment. But it, even then, it had a good moment within it. Because while the narration was still there in parts, most of it was dialogue, and thank God it was, or that oh. scene could have been. Co- All of the Kamugi Merowin stuff was dialogue. Maybe not. Maybe I'm lying. But I, I can't remember anything that was yeah, enough of except it except the Falcon thing. Enough of it was just within both of their minds and the reactions of the three guards. That's that is that relationship is money, and I'm pissed that you did not discuss it in the way that it should have been, in my opinion, personally, to me. 100%. <laughs> was. Or that scene could have been compromised for me. I don't need Tagashi to tell me how the character is feeling on the inside. That's the subtext, and this scene had. Oh, you you mean going crying and yelling and saying Killua, f- you? I'm gonna that's kill the, her anyway. That's the subtext. What cool. subtext is there? I'm angry and I want to kill this person to get kite back. No so matter what. So instead of the narrator telling us, the character tells us. Subtext, and and again, it's just subtext. It doesn't matter what it is. It just is. So much subtext. You could... What? An underlying and often... An uh, underlying and often distinct theme in a piece of writing or oh, conversation. Oh, boy. I, I think you just meant Subtle. so much subtext you could read it all over Gon's face and that's what I thought this arc needed to do more of stop relying on the narration I should be able to derive any information I need from what they say to each other from their expressions or what they do and at the end of the day this was a terrific story delivered in a way that I just couldn't resonate with and may have left me a little disappointed I'm delighted so many people it's a terrific story based on what the, the thing that going on with that, going to kill her. That one thing. He this was this was almost naught but complaining, and now you're going. It's a terrific story that I don't dig. It, that's just the shield of just going. Look, I'm saying that it's good. I just personally don't like it. That's all that is. He can't go, which I would have been fine with if he wasn't talking about how brilliant it was and all this other stuff. He he just went. I think there's a pretty good story here. But I think it, he fumbled the bag and it sucks. <laughs> he can't say that. <laughs> but it seems like he feels like it sucks. Absolutely, but he can't say that. Like, I would be interested to know what his rating was of the arc. Mm-hmm. Not all the subtext and all this crap and the underlying, but what his rating was of this compared to other things. 
Six point five because I'm feeling a very six point five from him. Maybe he's gonna give it once at the because I don't know how his how his wrap ups for a series go. So maybe he he does just have like a final rap video. Let me you know what? Let me see. Uh, Jojo 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 Jojo. Uh, he, Jojo, did, he Jojo. did a Jojo tier list after that, and um, One Piece movie, movie, Wano, I guess not. No, 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 uh, try to go to the end of the video, because it's a uh, review, so maybe. Ah, uh, Ridge Wallet, very nice. No, no, stop that, stop that, stop that. Why is he doing Wano? What do you mean? We're in Act 3 now, why is he doing an Act 3? Oh, no, this is um Act 1, Act. Yeah, we're in Act 3. Huh. Oh, he must be doing it as it's coming out. Okay, go to something else, some other arc. Like Whole Cake or something. Yeah, he's probably reading 30 chapters or so as they come out in the end. No, no but he doesn't have Wano Art Act 1. Oh, yeah, I think uh, Toei took it down. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, so, yeah, let's go to uh, Whole Cake and Reverie. That's fine. Ridge Wallet again. Very nice. Very high quality wallet. Totally a very older thing to do. Uh, Maybe it was the mayor of Windmill Village. He's never supported Luffy's efforts. The story that they can be reasoned with, it's going to be a very interesting and nuanced story, and that's for certain. Nuanced. That's a good one. In conclusion, when I started this series, I knew it was going to be tough. I knew that there was a reason not many channels just pick up and review this the way that I have. And last week, I think I hit that wall for the very first time, which is why, for Wano, I will be reviewing the acts individually. With whole cake, you hit a wall? Able to dive into greater detail Whatever. About the story Half a whole cake. With that said, that will do it for today's video. I'll nope. see you all next week when we finally get to Wano. And thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much okay, for Okay, so I'm going to the this end of this for some of the most important moments of my life. I can't wait to continue this story with you all, but from the expectations I had before entering into this self-imposed challenge, and this quite simply couldn't have been done without Shut up. <laughs> being more happy reading a story in all of my life. Sincerely, I can't take this. <laughs> If you were in your feelings. room and just going, uh, let me check out how Mark does his bit. Nope. Yeah. Can't do it. <laughs> I can't take this. <laughs> I've never felt it. Whatever. <laughs> nah. Sponsored by Ridge Wallet. Yeah, it is. <laughs> People across the world disagree with me and love this arc regardless. With even some cases, I'm sure, loving this because of generation with it amplifying the experience for them. I yep. just didn't share that experience. I hope final section of this arc lord knows things are heating up for sure but until then okay why do you hope you can enjoy the final arc the final little bit of this arc why not just go uh i'm interested to see where it goes yes instead of please well, let me enjoy it well I, I i can kind of feel that just like i want something that i liked previously to continue on this like train so i hope that i can like this upcoming arc no if you're in the middle of an arc yeah, you're right. And you're going towards the end. You're yeah. not going to go, well, I hope it turns yeah. around and I can enjoy no, the end. No, of you're right. You're right. I got you. <laughs> and I've been totally not Mark. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next week. You, you really just ended on this. I wonder how he's going to feel about the, the Next week is going to be very interesting. It's going to be real interesting next week because there's that's the conclusion of the arc, conclusion of the storyline. So hopefully he talks about Merwin and Kumugi some more over there. But that's, you know what? Maybe that's what he's waiting for because that uh, the last third of it is basically just their fight mm -hmm. and go on power it up. Yeah. So maybe that's where he's going because I, I doubt based on that you can get 15 to 18 minutes out of the story. Yeah. Okay, dear. Yeah, Mark, Mark is not a good YouTuber. We keep saying this. I, I, I appreciate that he at least tried to go. Look, there's some problems here, but he had to just qualify with his same old. It's good, but it's just not good for me, sort of thing. C come on now, 
Say what you mean. If you think it's a stinky poo, make say it's a stinky poo. So it's it. You said some, but it's not enough. If it was just that fifteen minute video of you going, yo, stinky, stinky, that been we. Hey, take back everything. I take back some of what I, I would have taken back a lot of the things I said. I take back some of what I said in this in this case, but but you still just had to go out, ah, no, nah, but and then you just skipping over stuff and just yeah, I didn't talk about that last week for some reason, but I'm gonna talk about it for some reason here, even though Killable's story isn't done yet, and you you're going oh it didn't lead to anything, but you don't know if it led to anything or not, but I guess you're just assuming that it didn't or it did didn't in this exact sixty chapter stretch of time. So you so you now have carte blanche to talk about it, I guess, as opposed to back then. Sure, whatever. You skipped over a lot of stuff. Way too much. There's so much. There's so many little fights there. You just go character development and plot plot chameleon. Plot device. Plot device. And you don't explain why they're bad. You don't under you don't explain if you find them interesting. You don't explain them. It's funny because I think he could if he would have explained more, there would have been even more negatives. Yes. And we can't and be having that. He didn't want that. He wanted a all as far as Split as he possibly could split. He wanted a, I understand that this is good and I understand why people like this, but I'm not really feeling it. That's what he wanted. Okay. Well, we're back next week then. <sighs> Another For the end. For the end. Unless he hits us with that woo-wop. 